Part One of Rhymed Recipes for Any Occasion. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Betsy Bush, June 2011. Rhymed Recipes for Any Occasion by Imogene Clark. Change is the sauce that sharpens appetite. Decker and Ford. Acknowledgement. Thanks are due to the editors of the Woman's Home Companion, Good Housekeeping Magazine, The Housewife, Table Talk, and the Boston Cooking School Magazine for their kind permission to reprint some of these rhymed recipes originally appearing in their columns. Two, T-I-L, for the best of reasons. Now, good digestion weight on appetite, and health on both. Macbeth. Salads. Well read, deeply learned, and thoroughly grounded in the hidden knowledge of all salads. Beaumont and Fletcher. Variety is the very spice of life that gives it all its flavor. Cowper. Cucumber Boats. The hand that hath made you fair hath made you good. Measure for measure. Take small cucumbers for your fleet, and treat each one the selfsame way. Cut lengthwise a slice from lower side, forming a keel that straight will stay. Then hollow out the upper side to make a little oval boat, and set each on a separate plate as if it ready were to float. Fill in as cargo shredded pine, fragrant and sweet beyond all praise, diced cucumbers and walnut meats, all closely bound with mayonnaise. Now launch your fleet, and rest assured, the venture will successful be. How good it were could such a fate bless all the ships you send to sea. Japanese Salad The image of it gives me content already. Measure for measure. In chrysanthemum land, far over the sea, they give me this salad for Sunday night tea, and I'm sure you'll believe I ate it with glee. Shredded apples and truffles and celery white, well seasoned and mixed, as I saw with delight, with chrysanthemum flowers all glowing and bright. These covered with mayonnaise, golden of hue, with hard-boiled eggs garnished and green olives, too, were served in a bowl of rich Japanese blue. Banana Salad How many things by season seasoned are to their right praise and true perfection? Merchant of Venice Select bananas gold of hue and uniform in size. With care remove the fruit and slice quite thin, I would advise. Mix these slim rounds with pecan meats, broken in tiny bits, and grapefruit shredded finely, too, and robbed of all its pits. This medley next is drenched with oil and lemon juice combined. The hollow skins are then filled up, or shall we say relined? Now place upon crisp lettuce leaves or curly watercress, the golden shapes and walnuts add, shorn of their outer dress. STUFFED PRUNE SALAD Just as in nature thy proportions be, as full of concord their variety. A. Cowley Wash a pound of large prunes, the larger the better, and soak for three hours. Do this to the letter. Then cook them, I pray, until they are tender, and after they cool, to give them new splendor, their pits cast aside, their stony internals, and stuff them quite full with rich walnut kernels. On separate plates, leaves of lettuce array, and three prunes, or four, in each nest stow away. Then cast over all that goldenest blessing, which we mortals name a mayonnaise dressing. Muskmelons and Grapefruit No other terms than unconditional and immediate surrender. 
I propose to move immediately upon your works. U.S. Grant Select small melons, firm and chilled, and cut each one in two. Next, scoop the center out and leave a generous space in view. With grapefruit bits and melon dice, proceed these nests to fill. Then with French dressing marinate, and win your guests' good will. Instead of grapefruit, oranges may be preferred by some, and if they're used with chopped nut meats, all caviling is dumb. Peach Salad A Modern Ecstasy Macbeth Choose fine large peaches, peel and have, and cast the stones aside. Then till they're very firm and cold, on ice let them abide. Put lettuce leaves on separate plates, and in each nest the fruit. Filled with whipped cream and mayonnaise, the hardest taste they'll suit. Watermelon Salad I warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. Twelfth Night Before the coming of Jack Frost, while summer lingers with her spell, let this most simple salad course charm eye and palate too as well. Out of a watermelon ripe, cut rounds from the delicious red, using the scoop with which the cook oft makes potato balls instead. Drain these and chill, then place each one amid crisp leaves of lettuce green, like hearts of rose, while over all, French dressing glistens with its sheen. Flower of a Lily, Pimento and Cheese Salad Practice is everything. Periander. Drain a small can of pimentos, then each one lay out flat and trim, the edges evenly and neat, and shape into a cone form slim. Next mash a cheese, one made of cream, with enough oil or cream, that you may roll it with your hand in pipes, like macaroni thick and new. Each cone of red pimento lay on little leaves of lettuce white, and when the cheese is pressed inside, French dressing add, just seasoned right. If these precepts you take to heart, and strive to follow well and true, each guest will murmur with delight when the lily flower meets his view. Banana and Nut Salad These reasons made his mouth to water. Butler Here's a dainty salad worthy of a ballad, or, you will admit, of any kind of song. Take some red bananas, product of Havana's. Strip of peel and cut in cubes just three inches long. Next to these pieces, which you roll in crumbs of rich hue, made of peanuts powdered fine as ocean's sand. Lay on lettuce duly, and to crown all truly, o'er the whole French dressing you pour with spendthrift hand. End of part one. Part two of Rhymed Recipes for Any Occasion by Imogen Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Desserts. The daintiest last to make the end most sweet. Richard the Second. Any pretty little tiny kickshaws, tell William Cook. Part two of Henry the Fourth. Mount Etna in Isis. Comfort me with cold, King John. In crystal glasses for your guests, first as foundation stand, ice cream that's from pistachio made, green as the summer land. Next, strawberries, fresh, luscious red, arrange in layer neat, flavored with maraschino wine like breath of flowers sweet. And now vanilla ice cream take, and build a little cone, a tiny mountain from whose top, as if with lava strewn. Some almonds place the mimic stream, will cause no least alarm. Indeed, Mount Etna, viewed like this, possesses only charm. Fruited Whipped Cream Infinite Riches in a Little Room Marlowe. Whip until stiff a pint of cream. 
the cream must suffer and not you sweeten it now with lavish hand and add this mixture thereunto one cup of strawberries left whole and one of shredded juicy pine with orange and banana mixed cut into dice all rather fine serve very cold and one thing more be sure the cream is extra sweet the fruit is acid and you know the little less oft mars the treat pear compote that i should live so long and ignorant of such wealth as this randolph peel some small pears and leave them whole nor cut their stems away in water stand where lemon juice will keep them white they say next boil a cup of sugar sweet the granulated's the best with tablespoon of water till it threads that is the test dry well and form in pyramid the pears on which you pour the half cold syrup so each one with glaze is coated o'er put this to cool then with whipped cream heaped all around the base serve cold as ice from polar seas or any frigid place good as this sounds if o'er the fruit before the syrup's set almonds are cast or other nuts you'll find it better yet afterthought thrice better though if peaches small are used the selfsame way well sprinkled with pistachio nuts none can this fact gainsay moonshine though this be madness yet there's method in it hamlet find out moonshine was the word that a wood near athens heard and to bottom when he cried an almanac there was supplied but no almanac to-day of my moonshine aught can say rather seek of me to know in the lines subjoined below yolks of eggs that number three must be beaten steadily till they spread a glistening froth stiff as snow from out the north now for sugar piled up high thrice in teaspoon it must lie this is added to the bowl and with force you beat the whole next three peaches ripe and sweet in small pieces join the treat then a pint of thick rich cream then vanilla a small stream and for a completer spell brandy does the list to swell just a trifle if you please what two teaspoons hold with ease now the whole must frozen be ere it's really done you see just as if it were ice cream though it tastes more like a dream serving glasses very thin how it glimmers there within golden as the harvest moon caught somehow by mortal spoon melon rings and ice cream they're welcome all let em have kind admittance timon of athens select small spicy cantaloupes you know the kind i mean slice crosswise into rings then scrape the seeds away quite clean the fruit is chilled and when it's served each circle on its plate has for a heart rich white ice cream is that a cruel fate french pineapple bisque a hit a very palpable hit hamlet beat with one cup of sugar white the powdered is the best i deem yolks of four eggs then stir till light and add thereto a pint of cream next turn into the foamy mass a can of golden shredded pine mixed well with brandy one small glass and macaroons crushed very fine let freeze and when the time draws nigh to serve this dainty at your feast see it approach with kindling eye perfection at the very least date jelly feel masters how i shake part two of henry the fourth to make this jelly stew some dates i pray until the stones slip easily away then take a mould a circle one is best and in its place like lining in a nest the rich dark fruit cut into little strips next add a layer made of almond chips 
then one of dates, then nuts, then dates once more, and over all clear lemon jelly pour. Set on the ice until it's time to serve, heaped with whipped cream in many a graceful curve. Orange Compote He hath been used ever to conquer. Coriolanus Take oranges of medium size, and peel remove, I pray, from each a round cut from one end, and scoop the seeds away. Fill up the little cups thus formed, with strawberry preserve, the flavor mixed with orange juice, is more than most deserve. Then top each orange with whipped cream, a cap all soft and white, made up of puffs, while four rosettes, hold strawberries gleam bright. On separate plates the fruit then serve with lady fingers slim, and I've no doubt a king would say the dish was fit for him. Watermelon Balls Give us a taste of your quality. Hamlet Cut a fine melon into halves, and from the lovely pink make balls with a potato scoop. They're prettier than you think. Next chill and sweeten, then pile up, in glasses sparkling bright, the rosy shapes with sherry drenched to make the flavor right. Turkish Parfait Give us the luxuries of life, and we will dispense with its necessaries. J. L. Motley Coffee, which makes the politician wise, from turkey comes in this delicious guise. Within a basin put a quarter pound of freshly roasted berries, still unground, a bit of sweet vanilla pod, then pour on these a pint of hot cream and no more. Set all to steep for thirty minutes quite, what time, with quarter pound of sugar white, you cream the yolks of half a dozen eggs, and put the same, the chef from turkey begs, with the infusion, next to the basin stand, in boiling water, and with vigorous hand, the fragrant mixture stir repeatedly, until it's thick as honey from the bee. Remove and strain, add half a pint of cream, and beat o'er ice till cold, then serve, and dream. Vienna Filled Apples A dish fit for the gods. Julius Caesar Take apples and remove the cores, scrape well the pulp away, and in each hollow cup thus formed, this medley duly lay. Sugar and grated lemon peel, and raisins chopped to shreds, with apple snips and bits of nuts, and cinnamon in threads. Now set the apples in a pan, and pour upon the fruit a cup of wine with water mixed, and sweet the taste to suit. When you have stewed the apples till they're very tender grown, serve cold, each on a separate plate, with the rich sauce or strewn. French Orange Compote Muse, sing the man that did to Paris go. W. King Sugar and water you combine to make a syrup sweet, adding a little lemon juice, the flavor to complete. Peel oranges, the seeds discard, cut into quarters true. Lay in the boiling syrup next, and cook ten minutes through. Place on a crystal dish the fruit, o'er which the syrup pour, and strew with candied cherries red, to give the one touch more. Christmas Charlotte Russe We'll keep our Christmas merry still. Walter Scott Whip up a pint of well-chilled cream till it's a fairy fluff. Then powdered sugar fold within, your taste is guide enough. Add a tablespoon of gelatin, dissolved in water cold. The cup should be but quarter full, and drop by drop it's told. Next, Candied cherries, chopped in bits, ruddy and gleaming bright, from a big cup are turned upon the mass of snowy white. Serve this within a sponge cake shell, the dish all wreathed about, with holly leaves between whose green red cherries twinkle out. End of part two.
Part four of Rhymed Recipes for Any Occasion by Imogen Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part four. Cakes. Dost thou think because thou art virtuous there shall be no more cakes and ale? Twelfth night. Not to know me argues yourselves unknown. Milton. Lady Baltimore Cake. I awoke one morning and found myself famous. Byron. In a southern city shady there's a cake named for a lady, one who doubtless was the darling of the house of Baltimore. Not know we of this fair sister, yet a writer, Owen Wister, calls his novel by the cake's name. Into thousands it did soar. But it surely was the cake's fame that did make the story soar. Merely this, and nothing more. For that peerless, toothsome matter, this is how they make the batter. Just one cup of golden butter, two of sugar I implore, cup of milk and three of flour, half another of that dower, two teaspoons of baking powder, whites of six eggs, well whipped o'er, and one spoon in which rose water has been duly filtered o'er, merely these, and nothing more. Now there still remains the filling, which the layers keep from spilling, and it's thickly used as frosting on the top and sides galore. Three cups sugar, one of water, boiled until it threads, or otter, beaten with the whites of three eggs, in which cup of raisins pour, also cup of chopped pecan meats, and five figs sliced thin you pour, only these, and nothing more. Rocks. Like, but oh, how different. Wordsworth. Most people think that rocks are stones and never meant to eat, but if you'll make the ones I mean, you'll find them quite a treat. One cup of powdered sugar take, two thirds of butter add, and cream together soft and smooth, the work will make you glad. Two eggs well beaten go in next. Then tis the flower's turn, one cup and half a cupful more, but any extra spurn. A teaspoonful of cinnamon and one of powdered clove, a pound of walnuts, chopped with pound of raisins that we love. These add with soda, well dissolved, a teaspoonful, that's all, in water hot to keep the rocks from an untimely fall. On buttered tins the mixture drop, from spoon twill oddly form, bake in an oven not too cold, nor yet again too warm. Taste one when done, and you will own, before you are much older, the only fault with such a rock is that it's not a boulder. Ice Cream Cake Best of all, among the rarest of good ones. Cymbeline Make a good sponge cake. Any book will tell you how to do the trick. Use layer pans in which to cook. The batter spread a half inch thick. When they are baked, set by till cold, nor let impatience mar their gold. Then, calling all your native skill, whip hard a pint of rich sweet cream. Suppose it treated you so ill. What would you think? Well, to my theme. A tone with sugar sifted through and add vanilla extract too. Next in the mass of fluffy air, as twere a cloud from heaven dropped, fold in with the extremest care. One pound of almonds blanched and chopped, this twixt the layers thickly pour, who eats one slice will ask for more. Ah, willingly, I would forsake doughnuts and other simple things, for this the queen of every cake, how glad I am it has no wings, and yet it goes so quickly, too. I'm sure it has them. What say you? Nut Wafers Oh, well done! I commend your pains. Macbeth Here are cakes for dainty eating. Peanut butter, just a cup. In the bowl some soda meeting. Half a teaspoon you take up. Add one cup of clear warm water. Stir till paste is smooth as silk. Leave not a trace, my daughter, of the soda white as milk. Then, still beating like a vandal, 
mix in flour just enough to form a dough that you can handle it must be a plastic stuff knead this well with your ten fingers then cut wafers very thin and where moderate heat lingers is the place to bake them in let the oven do its duty you'll discover by and by that each wafer is a beauty when it comes out crisp and dry spiced coffee cake few things are impossible to diligence and skill samuel johnson sometimes it chances john will sigh for dainties tasted long ago and should you wish to still that cry and have him laud you to the sky the means are duly set below the usual cup of butter take and just the same of sugar too alack how true with us who bake no matter how our brains we rake repeat we must repeat we do molasses next rich nutty brown one cup of this and one as well of strong cold coffee best in town one egg four cups of flour down into the mixture go to dwell add cup of raisins stoned you know and baking powder teaspoons three while cinnamon will one o'erflow and cloves will e'en be measured so thus ends the ancient recipe afterthought now if you ask how long it should within the oven's arms abide i cannot answer if i would i only know that it makes good when the broom proves it's satisfied bethlehems they are ever forward in celebration of this day henry the eighth of all the cakes that come for christmas day the little bethlehems must lead the way so simple too to make as you will see if you will read this rhyme attentively first butter take about a fourth of cup then sugar brim but once same measure up cream that together till they're smooth as silk and add straightway half cup of sweetest milk next sift one cup and half one more of flour into the bowl a sudden fairy shower with two teaspoons of baking powder white now beat and beat again till all is light then in the mixture fold with careful hand whites of two eggs whipped so they stiffly stand and last of all a dash of flavoring sweet rose or vanilla and the holes complete put in star pans but give each room to grow and bake in oven neither quick nor slow then when the little shapes have grown quite cold wrap them in softest frosting smoothly rolled let some the red of holly berries wear while others don a snowy mantle fair but white or red this do they clearly say we wish you all a merry christmas day end of part three Part four of Rhymed Recipes for Any Occasion by Imogen Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part four Candies. I am glad that my Adonis hath a sweet tooth in his head. Lily. All that's sweet was made, but to be lost when sweetest. More. Divinity. Thank me for this more than for all the favors which all too much i have bestowed on thee two gentlemen of verona throughout the land in every school and college where girls do gather there you'll find this knowledge lectures and lessons may all forgotten be but never how to make divinity and so it chanced that once upon a time a maid skilled in the art gave me this rhyme two cups of granulated sugar and one of maple syrup sweet with a tablespoon of vinegar and cup of water i entreat boil these until a little hardens in water in a handy bowl then add a spoonful of vanilla and from the fire take the whole what time this mixture has been cooking another pan nearby must hold one cupful of same kind of sugar and half a cup of water cold 
these two together must boil until your spoon a silver thread can spin then drop the mass on the stiff whipped whites of two fresh eggs and beat it in next stir with this the first concoction which should by now be slightly cool and beat till all begins to stiffen then add nut meats two cups the rule drop on waxed paper if such your wish is or pour the whole into a pan tracing with deft unerring knife point shapes that no mortal maid will ban coffee fudge right noble is thy merit richard the second of granulated sugar take two cups full to the top and one of coffee rich and strong now mingle every drop next add some butter golden sweet a teaspoonful not two or if rich cream you'd rather have one tablespoon will do boil all together on the stove until mark this i pray a little beaten with a spoon will stiffen right away then quickly take the saucepan off but dream not labor's done call in the strength of your right arm and beat the mass like fun nor stop a moment till it grows quite stiff and then with speed stir in a cup of pecan nuts chopped fine to meet your need pour out into a buttered tin the stuff will scarcely budge mark off each toothsome square with skill and you have coffee fudge seafoam candy fruit of the wave oh dainty and delicious w a crawford two cups full of sugar light brown of hue a teacup of water added thereto must boil until done and this is the test dropped in cold water a bit may be pressed into soft shapes that will easily budge less brittle than taffy harder than fudge have ready stiff whipped the white of one egg and pour in the syrup slowly i beg all the time stirring with increasing haste and adding vanilla extract to taste then beat a while longer till very light the mixture proclaims your efforts just right drop from your spoon's tip with infinite care on paraffin paper the candy so fair and each little snowy glistening heap will look like the foam that crowns the great deep the sea's children though would envy our treat far better i'm sure they'd find it to eat peppermint drops our intent was at this time to move inward delight beaumont and fletcher two cups of sugar pulverized and half a cup of water cool within a pan quite medium-sized are set to boil this is the rule that they be boiled five minutes long your spirits you can cheer with song flavor with oil of peppermint you'll have to judge by your own taste for this there are no rules in print i only caution do not waste the essence since the little less oft pleases more than the excess now stir the mixture till quite thick and here again you use your wit then drop on paper waxed and slick the fairy shapes as you see fit if served when dinners run its course we all can dine without remorse peanut brittle less noise less noise part one of henry the fourth two tablespoons of butter of vinegar but one a cup of rich molasses the list is almost done except for cup of sugar brown as a spanish nun upon the fire these are boiled till in water cold the syrup cracks then peanuts just what a cup will hold divested of their jackets are in the mixture rolled off from the stove take saucepan and soda one teaspoon dissolved in water dash in then beat the stuff and soon turn into pans and set them to cool beneath the moon chocolate caramels now this overdone or come tardy off though it make the unskilful laugh cannot but make the judicious grieve hamlet one cup of sugar 
one also molasses filled, and one of milk, small spoon of butter, these you know, with chocolate grated fine as silk, unsweetened to a quarter pound, are creamed by stirring round and round. This mixture's boiled until it's done, cracking in water proves that true, then into buttered pans it's run, inch thick or even less will do. But one thing more, and all is told, mark off in squares when nearly cold. Butterscotch Our old and faithful friend, we're glad to see you. Measure for Measure this candy's out of date, they say, old-fashioned quite, and lacking style. Alas, that favorites have their day, while well, Robbie Burns thought it worth while. And if he failed the fact to mention, at least it is a Scotch invention. Now should you wish the sweet to make, these simple rules pray don't despise, of sugar brown one cup you take, a piece of butter walnut size. Vinegar in a teaspoon's hold, and half a cup of water cold. Boil all together patiently for twenty minutes, then you can. Some flavor add a drappy wee before the whole is turned in pan. And after that, why that is all, except on you great praise will fall. Stuffed Dates To tell the secrets of my prison house. Hamlet how hard to have a heart of stone, but if you would that wrong atone, some almonds blanch, sprinkle, when dry, with as fine salt as you can buy, and in an oven quickly brown, then from the biggest dates in town, take out the stones, and in each bed, pop in a salted nut instead, draw close the edges, and the whole, in granulated sugar roll. Another change. A softer heart than that you make, if fine chopped peanuts you will take, while sweeter heart, as pure as snow, is furnished by the marshmallow. One square of that most toothsome paste makes of a date a dream to taste. But do not close the edges, too. Leave just a little white in view. Maple Cream Caramels Practice is the best of all instructors. Old Maxim Few ingredients, indeed, for these caramels you need. Sugar from the maple trees, sweet with kiss of sun and breeze. Two pounds you must measure true, then fresh butter, ounces two, and a cup of thick rich cream, moving like a lazy stream. Now the sugar must be set, with a dash of water wet, on the stove to melt in haste, and when on the fragrant paste little bubbles skim with ease, pour the cream in slowly, please. Stir it gently, gently pray, then without the least delay, add the butter stirring still. Ah, this candy calls for skill. Soon your labors will be o'er, soon you'll rest and stir no more. When the syrup brittle grows, in water cold as winter snows, Turn in pans, and when it's cool, mark in squares. So ends the rule. Molasses Candy A Brittle Glory Richard the Second. Take two cups of rich molasses, brimming measure I advise. Mix with these a cup of sugar, and some butter, small egg size. Now a tablespoon of glycerin, with the rest is duly blent. To produce a magic smoothness, like an oil of good intent. Put this mixture in a kettle, set above a fire strong, where it stays till it has boiled hard, five and twenty minutes long. Test as usual in iced water. If it snaps, you know it's done. Stir in soda, one half teaspoon, and in pans the candy run. After it has cooled a little, pull until it's almost white, and with scissors snip in pieces, each a mouthful of delight. End of part four. Part five of Rhymed Recipes for Any Occasion by Imogen Clark. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. 
Part 5. Sandwiches. And if it pleases you so, if not, why so? Two gentlemen of Verona. The dial points at five. Comedy of errors. Fruit sandwiches. Tis almost five o'clock. Tis time you were ready. Much ado about nothing. Get a fresh loaf of baker's bread. The graham loaf is to my taste. Cut into slices cobweb thin, and then prepare this simple paste. Take figs that overseas do come, almonds that dream of southern France, and apples that, much nearer home, the beauty of our land enhance. Put these together, one and all, and with a hand as firm as fate, chop into bits exceeding small, and you've a filling up to date. Strawberry Sandwiches Tis deeds must win the prize. Taming of the Shrew Cut bread in thin and crustless rounds, or oblongs if you choose, and spread with butter generously. All but the best refuse. Next, make a paste of strawberries and powdered sugar fine, with which each sandwich you proceed most carefully to line. For a pink luncheon these are served, with baby ribbons tied, delicious to the taste and sight, the honors they divide. Graham Bread and Cheese Sandwiches Pray, does anybody here hate cheese? I would be glad of a bit. Dean Swift Put the merest glow of butter on each slice of graham bread, then a coating of French mustard, do more generously spread, after which, O oh, most delicious, comes a layer of cream cheese, stuffed with olives, chopped and numerous, as round honey swarm the bees. Apple and Nut Sandwiches My custom always of an afternoon. Hamlet these little sandwiches for tea are simple, you'll declare. Cut white bread very slenderly, and trim the edges so there'll be no brown crust anywhere. The slices spread with butter sweet, a tiny golden sheen, then apple discs so slim and neat, with mayonnaise and chopped nut meat, put in the space between. Brown and White Sandwiches Soon at five o'clock, please you, I'll meet with you. Comedy of Errors Thin slices of brown bread, thin slices of white, Each with nut butter spread, the housewife's delight. These alternately press, together with care, Cut into strips, and dress a feast anywhere. Ginger Sandwiches Thank God for tea! What would the world do without tea? How did it exist? I'm glad I was not born before tea. Sidney Smith Crystallized ginger from the distant east, The kind that often tops a homemade feast, May be to other uses put. Here's one. Chopped fine each morsel, gleaming like the sun, Is dipped in orange juice, then thickly spread, Between thin layers of fine wheaten bread. Ah, ginger, that's hot in the mouth, tis true. I find you good, and so, without ado, will Martha, cumbered with her cares, when she has unexpected friends drop in to tea. Nasturtium Sandwiches To the dominion of the tea-table I submit. Congreve Slice fresh white bread and thickly spread with mayonnaise in lieu of butter. Then cut each slice in circles nice, using for this a biscuit cutter. Take leaves that twine on nasturtium vine, shield-like in shape, and oh, how tender, and place their green, the bread between, curling about the stems so slender. Then girdle round the snowy mound, nasturtium blossoms fair and fragrant. The sight complete would tempt to eat an appetite, however vagrant. End of part five. Part six of Rhymed Recipes for Any Occasion by Imogen Clark.
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part six Some Luncheon and Supper Dishes. Study what you most affect. Taming of the Shrew. Cookery is become an art, a noble science. Butler. Oyster balls. Brave conquerors, for so you are. Love's labors lost. Of sifted pastry flour, one cup, the yolk of one egg beaten up, a pinch of salt, a tablespoon of oil as gold as harvest moon, are put into the mixing bowl and water added to the whole, ice cold and just enough to make a batter that will drop, then take and beat all well. This is the test that bubbles form upon the crest. Into the foaming mass, I beg, stir the stiff beaten white of egg, and half a pint of oysters chopped, the mixture now is lightly dropped, from spoon and fried that pretty brown the trees put on in Richmond town. Serve on hot platter, where between sprigs of parsley emerald green, small triangles of toast appear, and lend the dish a further cheer. Strawberry Scramble Doubtless God could have made a better berry, but doubtless God never did. Walton The princess said, The snow lies white, and forth we mustn't ramble. There's not a strawberry in sight, but we'll have strawberry scramble. I grieve to say her maidens choked. They had to hide their laughter. She thought they coughed. They thought she joked. She proved her words soon after. She ordered up her chafing dish and all ingredients needful. It only seemed she had to wish her servants were so heedful. One tablespoon and half again of butter she demanded, melted it in the pan, and then the following commanded. Six eggs, which had been beaten up, small spoon of baking powder, and large of sugar half a cup of milk, her voice rang louder. What ho, some salt! Then all was cast upon the melted butter, and slowly stirred till thickening fast, her highness in a flutter. The whole into a dish did pour, and duly laid for cover, strawberry jam inch deep or more, fit treat for any lover. On every side were voices raised, and with no long preamble, her maids in hearty accents praised the peerless strawberry scramble. Celery Omelet A dish that I do love to feed on. Taming of the Shrew Cook until soft a cup, or more, of celery cut into dice. Drain well and add a cup of sauce that's rich and white and very nice. With salt and pepper season all, then make an omelet golden light. Fold in the dressing, and you'll have a dish to tempt an anchorite. Italian Oysters This treasure of an oyster. Antony and Cleopatra Into the chafing dish put these, a teaspoonful of butter, please, and two of sauce called Worcestershire, one tablespoon of sherry clear. Upon the mixture lightly toss, and one as well of Shrewsbury sauce, while slice of lemon, not too thin, and pinch of salt are cast within. When these are bubbling o'er the blaze, entrancing odors worthy praise, fill every corner of the room, dispelling far dyspeptic gloom. And now's the time to add with care, well drained a pint of oysters rare. Then cook the whole until you see the oysters curling up with glee, at which, I beg, without delay, put out the flame and bear away the dish for ready tis to pour on hot crisp biscuits salted o'er, and guests will find these oysters, well, more savory than tongue can tell. Stuffed Eggs on Anchovy Toast Good friends, sweet friends, let me not stir you up. Julius Caesar Spread some rounds of bread with butter, on which put anchovy paste, forming thus a good foundation that will suit most any taste. Next, some eggs proceed to devil, 
after cutting off one end these when ready stand on toast rounds cut and down will firmness lend over each at time of serving pour a lot of mayonnaise as the seal of all your labors on a dish be fitting praise baked macaroni and oysters ladies and gentlemen will you eat any oysters dean swift cook till quite soft in water salt some macaroni slim then halt drain well and rinse in water cold be sure you do just as you're told next in a buttered baking tin the macaroni lay within two inches deep the structure rear on which there duly must appear a layer thick of rich white sauce and one of oysters which of course with salt and peppers sprinkled o'er now macaroni comes once more layer by layer you repeat until the dish is full complete put sauce and macaroni last on which fine crumbs are thickly cast with butter dot then bake till brown and you've a dish to please the town eggs a la aurora what an excellent thing did god bestow upon man when he gave him a good stomach beaumont and fletcher to make this dish the writer begs that you will use six hard-boiled eggs press through a cullender the yolks and cut the whites with skilful strokes in disc-like shapes now one yolk more this time from egg not cooked but raw you beat up light as foam and toss into a cup of thick white sauce put this in a baking dish and drop the hard-boiled eggs upon the top then in the oven let it heat a little while and when complete serve in same dish and you will swear its likeness is aurora fair end of part six end of rhymed recipes for any occasion by imogene clark read for librivox.org by betsy bush june 2011